All right, guys, we are back with part two of my interview with the awesome guitarist that is Robert Baker from mm -hmm. YouTube. And uh, it's just amazing how many people you can find on YouTube that aren't professional, you know, with the big names like Steve and Paul Gilbert that really could, are really good at their craft and what they do. If you missed the first part, be sure to check that out. Uh, it was all about guitar questions. Today we're going to be dealing with the business side of being a guitarist which is the whole guitarpreneur thing that I'm all about here on this channel. Uh, please do check out Robert's YouTube channel for all kinds of videos that he's got. He also has a, uh, a personal blog vlog that he does called Life of a Guitar Player. I'm subscribed to that as well. I, I, I'm, I always wait for the next uh, issue of that to come out, and I know how life is. Sometimes it's hard to do that with all the editing. and Yeah. But uh, So, Robert... Uh, we're just going to start with entrepreneur questions sides of things, okay? Sure. Um, and once again, if you have any questions or anything like that, any of the audiences, please check out the previous video because we talked about what kind of guitars he has. We talked about what kind of gear he uses, you know, some of the different things like that. So we're just going to start right now. These are some of the issues that I deal with as an entrepreneur, as a self-employed business owner. And I just thought, you know, I like to get other people's perspective. I like to get other people's input. The first question I have is, how do you manage to balance work, family, and personal slash practice time? How do you manage to balance all that and still be sane? <laughs> well, yeah, that, it, it's not the easiest. I mean, what, what works out kind of good is um, my wife's a full-time student right now, so so usually she's busy doing a lot of schoolwork too, so then, you know, it's like, like the kids asleep and stuff like that, and then it's like, oh, practice time. But um, until like recently, I didn't have any, I was working seven days a week for about the last two years. And then about like two months ago, I started getting Sundays off. So, so now it's Sunday is kind of like no guitar, like guitars put away yeah. and, and we just go usually just drive somewhere and yeah. go to, like out of town a lot and stuff like that. Yeah. There has to be that time for each other in there and that time for, you know, life as well. It can't all be wrapped up in a business. And right now I'm at that point where I'm trying my best to. I'm starting to realize that, you know, put put the stuff down at 5 o'clock in the evening and go spend time with your wife. Let's go out on a date. Let's go walk. Let's go do something together. But you know what? If you're anything like me, the gears are constantly spinning, and you have to silence those noises in your mind. Yeah, it's tough. I think that's like, that's just part of being a musician and a yeah. guitar player. It's, there, there's no off switch for that yeah. stuff, so. I mean, you're constantly coming up with ideas. Like you, if you're anything like me, you have a phone nearby where you can say, okay, here's this idea. <laughs> Try not to let the wife catch you working on, on your off right. time, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's why she, she always makes fun of me because I'm always on my phone because it's just like constantly getting like YouTube notifications. I'm like, oh, I want to like respond to this person. Yeah, so, yeah. So usually she ends up just taking my phone and I'm like, well. <laughs> You are grounded, mister. Yeah, for real. That's, that's basically <laughs> and so as far as like your work day, what's a typical work day? I mean, what time do you end your work day? Is it is it different? You know? Um, well, like Monday through Friday, I, I teach at the store Metro Music, and I teach from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. each day. Mm -hmm. And um, then, like on Saturdays, I do all Skype lessons, and that's from 10 a.m. to 5:30. So okay. today's a little bit different. We were talking about spring yeah. break; mm -hmm. um, it's not so busy. But yeah, it's normally 10 to 5:30 on Saturdays, which is all Skype lessons. Okay. Okay. So, and you try to be to 10 to 5:30. So weekdays, it's 3 to 8. So you kind of have like a long morning. Or afternoon, yeah. And you just go into the evenings, okay. Yeah, I found it. It's hard to get to schedule people early morning guitar lessons and stuff because so. they're, unless they're homeschooled, it's going to be hard to do that. Most of them are after school kind of things, right? And once again, where you work at Metronome Music, you're in Ohio, so I mean, if anybody's mm -hmm. interested in that, I think they have a website, don't they? Metronome Music. Yeah, they just got a new website and all kinds of stuff. So. Okay. So lots of exciting stuff going on at Metronome. So do they ship worldwide, or is it just a local deal, or, or what? It's just a local. I mean, it's a pretty big store, you know. They, they deal in Fenders and, you know, all kinds of, like, pretty high-end guitars. So okay. I think they're also, I think they're a Marshall dealer, too. I don't know. I, I should probably know more about the store that yeah. I teach at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you find it's, uh, I was uh, noticing on your questions and answer videos that you had last night when I was watching. Um, somebody asked you about the best place to teach and you recommended teaching at a store because of the traffic. Personally, I tried to do the whole, uh, well, I didn't try. I looked into doing the whole store thing, 
but there were so many people there already, you know, and mm-hmm. it was kind of, you know, I didn't see the justification of me having to pay an enormous amount of rent for students that I didn't have traffic for yet, I guess. And so right. I teach at a I teach at a local Christian uh, based kind of like arts facility. You know, they have dance, they have um, art, they have music, they have all kinds of stuff. So I've, I've been teaching there, but I find that, that the traffic is slow. There's no, you know, having to go there to buy strings, having to go there to buy uh, gear, you know, and all this stuff. I have to send them elsewhere. But uh, so you obviously you have 50 or more students, so that's obviously been beneficial to you. Uh, yeah, and you know the, the stores kind. Of, I know a lot of stores are different, and they don't they don't take a lot from the teachers. I mean, the teacher gets the majority of the the money that we make. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and um, we just pay. And it's not like if we don't have a student at a time slot, we still pay them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we only pay them per student. So okay, well, that's good. So you're not you're not paying rent even if the, what if the, if the student doesn't show up, then you're not required to pay that for that student. Right. right? Exactly. That's cool. Yeah, they're they're really nice. I pretty much grew up in that store. So yeah, okay, that's cool. Um, so, um, so we talked about balancing work and family and personal practice time. Before I forget, I just realized this. If anybody watching this is wondering, we are actually using a program, not a program, but a, a website called Appear.in. Appear.in, and I wanted to do this as an experiment because Google Hangouts is is kind of finicky. And with Appear.in, all you have to do is go in, type in a room name, and claim it. And that's it. I mean, you give somebody the link. It says, you know, copy this link up here, and they can join you immediately. There's no software to install. There's nothing like that. It's such a cool, cool uh, program that I learned about through Cliff Ravenscraft, the podcast answer man. Uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts, uh, Robert. I don't know if you do or not, but I listen to a lot of them. And uh, I've learned about this through him. And this is really, it's its growing, it's fairly new, but there's a lot of features that's come up in just the last month or two. But it's such but an easy program to use. It's really cool. I mean, it seems like an awesome, like, I'm, I'm excited. I was like, man, I should do stuff like this. Yeah, so. this is pretty cool. Uh, I've claimed, <laughs> you'll be you will be aware, uh, you know, I've claimed the appear.in slash guitar. So that one's not available. <laughs> But you can do shred or whatever you you think of, you know, for years if you wanted to do like a video conferencing. You can have up to eight people, and then you can, you know, it allows you if you've claimed the room, which I have. It's got a little crown over here on my icon, which means I have control. I can kick people off. I can mute them. Whatever. Yeah, I can even lock the room, which I probably should have done that so nobody could come in. But <laughs> uh, yeah. exactly, I can lock the room so that nobody can come in. Now they've got a thing where they just released this week where somebody can knock on your room door and you can <laughs> elect whether you want to let them in or not so but this is pretty cool it's pretty pretty seamless there's no lag that i can tell i'm just using Snagit to record this thing and you know it's worth trying i mean it's, it's a really cool program and uh so maybe that's something you can use in the future robert for instead of hangouts you know it doesn't record right now it doesn't have that feature but they're looking on doing some being able to record it like they do hangouts oh. but it's a pretty cool little thing so here's something that i have been working on all year and it's one of my goals, and that is to master time management. <laughs> do you have some time management tips for me and for the audience? How do you how do you schedule your day? With me, I'm I'm constantly moving. I've got Google Calendar; it's my go-to thing. But sometimes it can be a little bit of a uh, a hassle because you're constantly looking at it, and if you don't get this done well, you move it to this area, and then you move this one over here, and you're still kind of rearranging everything. What is your best methods of dealing with time management and making sure that you first things come first and that you get things done that need um, to be done? Um, I'm, I'm still kind of old school. Make sure there's no phone numbers on here. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I just write down my days yeah. in, a, in a planner. Literally, like, this is like my week of guitar mm-hmm. lessons. So you can see it's like, it's just okay. basically and like when someone wants to switch, I just kind of like write them in somewhere and just cross off that thing. and. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, it, it's just nice because it's just like a physical copy that I I hold in my hand, and and it it's proven you know pretty good for me. I tried using like the calendar on my phone, but half the time I can't operate my phone. I'm trying yeah. to like put in a new event, and I'm like, wait, I just deleted it, like the other ten that yeah. I just made. So but then I just got one of these, and this has proven to be like just really helpful with you know you said time management. You know, and it's it's tough because you definitely want to watch and make sure you're not double booking students mm-hmm. and 
and all that stuff. And this is just proven, you know, I, re I rewrite it each week and yeah. you know, it's been perfect. I've got one of those two at my desk. Most of the time I'm at my desk when I'm working, so I, I utilize Google Calendar quite a bit. And I just basically plan my week on that and then kind of copy it to my personal calendar. Um, it So, but that, I mean, to me, that's, that's what I use as well, and it just it, it does kind of help clear things up. But there's always things kind of constantly switching around, <laughs> like yeah. you said, you know. Um, so I don't know. It's just like I'm trying to find new ways to manage time because it's so easy to let things stack on top of each other. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not really a problem double booking things. Do you plan like obviously for this? You're not at your desk a lot. You're more out with students. So you utilize your calendar, personal planner for that. Do you ever find that you plan to sit down, you know, tonight I'm going to do a demo for this panel, tonight I'm going to do a video for YouTube, tonight I'm going to do a vlog, I'm going to have to edit this. Do you plan all that stuff out too so that you can make sure that you have time to do for it or do you just let that happen when it happens? Yeah, I just kind of let that stuff happen. That's why the vlogs are fairly inconsistent because, mm -hmm. um, my my most important thing is, is always going to be the guitar videos. That's just what that's what I am. I'm a guitar player. I'm not yeah. a, a vlogger or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So those kind of always rank a little bit higher on my to to do list. And you know, um, it, it's just kind of like demos. I try to get done like ASAP. You know, yeah. it's, it's kind of like they send me something. I'll play with it maybe like a week, and then the next week it's like I got I got to get this done. So if that means you know drinking Red Bull and staying up until. <laughs> 8 a.m. to get a video done. It's like you know that that's part of the part of the job. Yeah. So, yeah. So I mean that stuff is just kind of like that. Um, the, the vlogs are just kind of like, you know, I mean I just I just put my my MacBook and then like if someone cancels and I don't feel like playing guitar, then I can sit there and edit a video real quick and upload it within you know 20 minutes or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Let me go back a couple weeks here. And I'm allowed to share my screen here, so I don't think there's anything on here that will... Uh, okay. Da, 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 da. Anyway, here we go. Let's start screen share. Let's hope this works. I'm going to see if this will let me... Yes, I want to share my screen. I want to share this screen. Is it showing both? Yeah. Okay, it's showing both. Yeah, right. I, see, I see your calendar and the... Yeah, well, that's one thing that's happening with this. They haven't really figured that out yet, how to disable, because I use two monitors. They haven't really figured out how to disable one monitor yet. But okay. uh, as you can see, obviously nobody can read this, so I don't have to worry about it. But this is my, you know, week most of the time. And I keep, you know, this is back in March. This is what my week looks like, dude. Um, hmm. I use Google Calendar for everything, but my problem is I probably plan everything too much like right here I've got Facebook notifications I need to check those so I'm gonna plan for it because if I don't everything else will get in the way you know and all this stuff is stuff that I plan I may need to just forget about planning half this stuff and just let it happen I'm finding myself having a lot of videos uploaded to YouTube that aren't released yet because I wanted to get them done you know while they're fresh in my mind but gotcha. uh, at the same time, you know, it's like I have to plan this stuff out so that I don't have to worry about, well, is it going to get done or is it not? You know, I mean, the, yeah, this is a typical week for me. All this stuff that's going on, and this is this is this week right now. We are in the interview Robert Baker section here. So <laughs> I'm in your calendar. You are in my calendar. That little red thing I just pulled down there. I'm, I'm extending it because it's lasting longer than I thought. But this is this is what my planning typically looks like, and I'll usually copy all this if not most of it, into my um, my calendar, my, my main planner, like I was telling you about. That You seem like you're um, much more like text, I just dropped my pick, tech savvy than I, I see, I barely know how to like operate things. I'm surprised I know how to edit a, edit a video, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, like, like I said, I always just end up deleting everything when I use the, the calendars. My, my pick has disappeared. Oh, here it is. <laughs> The trade of a guitar pick, it hits the floor and yeah. disappears. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I should probably plan things out better, to be honest. But Well, you, know. when you get things done, though. I mean, with me, the, the hard thing about making videos is I tend to ramble. I tend to not play. I tend to try to over-explain. And people, 
that's watching this know what I'm talking about because they complain about it a lot of times. But it's like I'm just so passionate about what I'm doing that I want to just make sure that they get it, you know. Right. I don't want to leave them hanging. I don't do tablature. I don't have time for it. So I want to make sure that everything is fairly explained thoroughly. And, you know, I have problems with having videos lasting 20 minutes as opposed to like maybe a little five-minute, six-minute lick video like you have. And I, I want to get it to where I can condense that and save time and have more time for other things. But it's it's hard to do that when you're in the moment and you're getting this stuff done and, you know, so. Yeah, I, I used to have longer videos and then I just kind of like, I, they're usually around like five, six minutes. Yeah. And I, I think that's like, I don't know, I think I read that in some research and that's like the, the golden like time frame for. Attention for span and all that, yeah. 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 Okay, so the next question is. How do you keep up with 50 plus students and not get confused what you taught them <laughs> every week? Well, with them, like at the store, they sell tablature books. So each student has, I, I hand write out the le each lesson that we do, like as we're going through it, oh, I'm cool. also writing the lesson out for them. Okay. So, so that's all like hand tabbed out for them. And then they come in the next week and, you know, maybe we're working on, I don't know, a Miley Cyrus song or something, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I teach them whatever they want to learn. It's not what I want, I'm not going to teach them songs I want to learn, so yeah. obviously like techniques and stuff is something that has to be learned, but you know, if they want to learn Taylor Swift, then you know what, Let, let's let's rock some Taylor yeah. Swift songs, yeah. you know? <laughs> so not. with me, I would feel like that would, because I'm so terrible at having to sit there and, okay, what string am I on? Okay, it's right here. And I would feel like that would cut into their lesson time if I was to do that. You get quick at it. You'd be surprised. Like when I first started teaching, I wasn't very fast, but now it's kind of like, Oh, like the, there's a scale of like, and usually I don't have to look at my guitar anymore. Like scales, yeah. you just, you've got to where you memorize it so well. And I guess with you, practice makes perfect on that too. I mean, yeah, I mean, you'll get to where you're really quick at it where it doesn't really eat up time of their, their lesson. Now that you mentioned that, I've noticed one thing I always had problems with was naming the note that I was on or naming the fret that I was on when I was, you know, kind of, now that when I've been teaching, I find that it's easier to say, okay, put your finger here on the fifth fret at the A string or whatever, you know. That's come a lot more natural to me just through experience and through continual repetition. Right. And, um, I, you know, so a lot of people, when they first start learning the guitar, they surprisingly don't know their fingers very well. Yeah. They don't know, like, index, middle, ring, pinky. Yeah. And uh, you learn that. And then, you know, and also, like, in YouTube videos, you learn. I used to, like, say the notes in my videos, like, oh, yeah. this is you know, A and stuff like that. And I don't think people care about it. They yeah. just want to know, like, the fret. It would take me longer to figure out what note I was on by backtracking, trying to find that the octave of that note. Okay, well, this note here is, so it's got to be this. I don't even follow that. I just worry about the frets. And I noticed that you can have numbers for everything. You can have the first string, the first finger on the fifth fret. That gets so confusing. So I just right. started to say, well, whatever finger, the first finger, the middle finger, the ring finger, the number for the fret and an actual string name for the string. That way it's a lot easier to decipher what I'm saying. Right. So so you just you just write out your tabs every week then. Yeah. And see with me, I'll mention this here in a minute, I use a system that allows me to type in lesson notes. And I do it not for their benefit, but also for mine so that every week I can print them out and look at what I did. And then I can go from there. Uh, do you... Do you I mean, with 50 students, I can't comprehend how hard it would be when you sat down with another student to be like, okay, now what did we go over? <laughs> <laughs> usually that's how it, yeah. how it goes. I'm like, now what were we learning last week? Yeah. So, but usually then I just open up the book and then, um, I mean, it's always kind of it's not not too good when they forget their book and you don't get to write it down. Yeah. But, um, but usually I can sit there and like muster all my brain power to figure out what we did. And you know, if it's a song, usually... Um, I can like catch on to it really pretty yeah. quick just to remember where we were at and stuff like that. Yeah. So I mean, you you learn a lot of songs. <laughs> that would be a good uh, video for you to do, maybe like your system of you know because I understand writing tabs for licks, but then you got uh, if they want to learn songs, I guess you would write down the chords and then maybe the slash marks for the rhythm. Um, yeah. Okay. So you just rely on them to bring their book. You don't have a separate book of your own, keeping up with all the stuff? No, I just okay. re rely on my memory, which isn't a good, good yeah. plan. But well, I mean, with 50 students or whatever, you have to kind of, I mean, be on it, you know. Yeah, I mean, you definitely have to, you know, know what's going on and, and be able to 
teach them because usually it's you know like three to eight it's i have a student at three three thirty four four thirty it's just like yeah. boom, 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 all the way the way through so there's no no real breaks so you don't have a now i've heard most people uh some people say, well, you don't want to teach over like three hours without a break. Do you do, I mean, what's your longest span of students? Do you have a break from three to five, like you said earlier? Is, or three yeah. to eight? Is that all oh, the way no, through? Yeah, three to eight, so it's like five hours. Like, that's never been really a big deal for me to do that stuff. I mean, okay. you know, and then usually, like, it's like occasionally, like, people are canceling because they could be sick. Yeah. So, I mean, so you get breaks in there. I mean, yeah, that's that's another issue that's he uh, a headache is having to deal with cancellations, makeup lessons, and all this other stuff. We well, yeah, I, I mean, I always have them pay um, like a month in advance. So yeah, we I always have them pay like the month, and then for that month are covered. Right. Like yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, sometimes they have to have makeups or they miss or whatever. Sometimes it can't be helped. Sometimes it can, and it's just tough luck if you don't do it because. I've got other students. I've got bills to pay. You know, it's you got to be responsible with that stuff. Right. I mean, you, you find you, you can't be like you have to be nice, but you can't be nice to the point where it's putting you out because you know yeah. this is our job. Exactly. Just like I, I always explain to them, like if they don't pay for the first two weeks, it's like you know, imagine you go to work and they hand you your paycheck and they're like, oh yeah, by the way, we shorted you two hundred dollars this week. You know, they they'd be pretty upset. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> this will probably be interesting. Um, the next question I have is, what is on your bookshelf, guitar-related or otherwise? Do you read much? And if you do, what do you kind of like to read? I mean, I don't read. I mean, I definitely read. Unfortunately, everything that I do is guitar for whatever reason. Yeah. But um, I, I you know I love reading guitar magazines and like interviews. I'm like a total nerd when there's a guitar player I like. I like to like learn everything about them. Yeah. Like. Paul Gilbert, it's like, oh, he started playing at this age and this age, and yeah. I don't know that that stuff's really interesting to me. So I don't have a bookshelf, but I have. I don't know if you can see it in the corner back there. Yeah, a crate. It's, it's actually all full of guitar magazines, and it's one of the four crates. There's four more in the closet, and then I actually have a giant box full of guitar magazines over the years. So okay. yeah, I've got several as well. I just don't. I don't really take them out to look at them. I probably should. I'm so enamored with like business books, and I'm I've got a little some videos on my channel about books that I own that you should read, you know things that I find that are very helpful business wise, and you know, and I'm so enamored with that. I probably need to just push a lot of that aside and get back into the guitar aspect of things. Um, a lot of them are fun, you know. A lot of them I have like their magazines that aren't even made anymore, you know, like mm -hmm. Guitar One magazine. I don't know if you've ever heard of that yeah, one. Yeah, I've got several of those. Yeah, from back like back in the day, and you know, Guitar World bought them, I think, and um, and then just like some old, really old ones, like before I even played guitar. Anytime I go to like um, a kind of like a it's called a half price bookstore, they sometimes have stuff like this, okay. old magazines, and I'll buy them, and they might be from like 1990 or something, and I'm like, well, I was one year old then, so. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, Robert? I didn't think to ask. How old are you? Uh, 23. 24. 24. Okay, I got about nine years on you. Hey, I'm well, hey, we're, we're all playing guitar. So yes, we're all we are. The, all the same, and you put me to, and you put me to shame, sir, on shred. Let me just say that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can hold my own on bluegrass, but when it comes to shred, I'm still learning a lot. So, well, I bet you can make me look pretty bad at bluegrass. So. <laughs> that's something to shoot for, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just a random question about you know, because I know as entrepreneurs and everything, a lot of people are about trying to learn more about their business and more about, you know, how they should focus on this and how they should, you know, plan their time. And that's the whole time related management tips and all that stuff too. I mean that I find books that are all the time important to me, you know, they're business related that could help me in my business. But at the same time, there's a time to back away from that and just live life and enjoy playing guitar and enjoy other things. And I'm right. still struggling with when to, when to just sit back from that, you know, because you think you, you think I've got to get this done, but the, the reality is your inbox is always full. There's always things to do. I mean, yeah, I mean, and that's like I like I always say when I play guitar, I don't like to to think a whole lot when I'm playing guitar. So yeah. I don't want to to overload like the business side of it or anything yeah. like that. Cause it's all, the most important thing is it always has to be fun. You know, we're, we're lucky to have a job that you know 
most people will, don't consider a job. So, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna gonna complain about it. You know, I'm definitely gonna spend the time to soak in and enjoy what yeah. I need to do. I find that's a, a a self-esteem issue with me. Some people don't really take you seriously when you say, "What do you do?" Well, I teach guitar. Oh, you know. You know, yeah. they just kind of brush it off like, well, that's not a real job. You should be out there hammering nails or, you know, working yeah. in the factory doing the same uh, boring, minute tasks 20 times over, you know, on a, a machine somewhere. But it's like, you know, people make money doing this stuff too, you know. Right. And, you know, and a lot of people, you know, had to, had to do those jobs. I had to work at Sam's Club for five years before I, you know, got to where I was doing this and you know and then there was that transition where I was full time there and full time teaching for a yeah. long time. So Well that's that's awesome with me. It's like I've worked in factories all my life. I've done all that stuff already. And when I got laid off I was so I would be at work thinking about what I could be doing on my my new course or, or this lesson or my YouTube channel and that's all that I was enamored with. And when I finally got laid off I said it's it's just time to do it. You know, I've worked yeah. for somebody else's dream all my life. Why not start one of my own and see where it goes? And now I've been teaching uh, since uh, and self-employed since 2012 and teaching since probably 2011, I think. And I was scared to death to start teaching guitar. I really was because, I mean, on YouTube, it's different. You sit down with somebody, somebody's actually paying you to teach uh -huh. you something. <laughs> with me, I'm like, man, that scares me to death. Yeah, and I mean. I don't know. It just now it's like, you know. I take it seriously, and I know I can impart some wisdom to these people, and I know I've got something to offer them, so it doesn't really make me feel guilty for taking their money, but I'm adding value to their life, you know I mean? Right. I mean, you've, you've put it in time to learn how yeah. to um, do it, and, you know, and I think, like, having, like, confidence and stuff to, to teach these people also gives them, you know, more than just showing them the guitar when you're sitting there and very confident, like, this is how you play this, like, mm -hmm. I this, you know, this is how it's done and stuff. Um, and I think it teaches them to be confident with their instrument and stuff too, and that, that might, you know, help them in, in life. You know, mm -hmm. I've received a couple letters from students, like, telling me, like, how, you know, they had, like, bad anxiety and, and stuff like this, and how much the guitar lessons and just guitar is, has helped them in mm -hmm. their life, you know, and I'm like, oh, that's perfect, you know, that, that's what the whole point of everything yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've received several comments like that too, and every one of those is just, what you need, you're always at, at that moment where you're like, man, I'm not making a difference, this really isn't helping, and all of a sudden somebody sends you a comment, you're like that, and you're like, that's what I'm here for, you know, that's yeah, what I like to hear. Exactly. That's really, you know, very rewarding, you know, being able to help somebody conquer something that they worked with or struggled with all their life. Right. You know, I've had people tell me, I've had DVDs, I've done this, I've done that, but nobody really made it clear until I watched what you did, you know. It's, I mean, that just blows my mind, you know, that I can have that effect on somebody. Exactly. Okay, um, now the next question is, how did you start teaching? I mean, with me, you're fortunate. You're, you've only been teaching, like you said, you've been playing guitar nine years. How long have you been teaching guitar? Um, I've been teaching full-time for um, three years. Three years. With me, I've been playing for 20 years, 20 plus, but I've only been teaching for like three years. So you're fortunate enough to get that, you know, chance and opportunity to, to not work for the man your whole life <laughs> and decide I'm tired of this, you know, so... So you, how did you start teaching? I mean, what got you into teaching in the first place? Um, well, it, it was Paul Gilbert who inspired, inspired me to be a teacher because um, just learning his stuff was so fun. And I was just mm -hmm. like, like, that's so cool. I'd love to be able to do that. And I would teach like my friends stuff. Like, I'd play stuff, and they'd be like, could you tab that out for us or something? So I would teach them like licks that I was figuring out. But then I started teaching at our house, and um, I had gotten a few students, and then actually the music store, Metronome, the manager either called me or messaged me or something and asked if I'd be interested in being a teacher. And I was like, yes, <laughs> like, absolutely. <laughs> and, um, you know, and then it was a while before I even got my first students there. It was like a month or two. And then yeah. I had like five students and like, I kept like three of those five for like, like two, they took lessons for like two years from me. Well, that's cool. And, yeah. And then just kind of kept building from there. Yeah. So did you find it was kind of like terrifying to, you know, be able to sit down with somebody and be like, oh, I've got to, you know, make sure that they get this right and don't want to teach them I, wrong and all this stuff. I was probably more nervous than they were. I was terrified. Yeah. Like, like, what if I don't know the name of this song? Yeah. Or, you know, or like a lot of the stuff. What is, if they give um, me something by Rick Graham and I don't know how to play it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, because a lot of times they come in with songs that they want to learn. I always divide up the lessons. You know, half is learning the guitar and half is learning a song that they want. Yeah. 
Um, a lot of times it's new songs that tabs don't even exist for yet. Mm -hmm. And you have to figure them out by ear and you need to be able to do it quickly. So I was really nervous about that because all my guitar teachers were like crazy good and they could figure out songs in like two seconds. Yeah. I'd, I'd bring them in a Van Halen song and they were playing it two seconds later. So, so that was definitely nerve wracking. Okay. But you pushed through it. I mean, that with me, it was like I got through that first hurdle, and it's it's terrifying. Starting out on your own, you don't have 401K. You don't have somebody giving you a paycheck every week. You don't have right. all this stuff. And if you can just get past that, you see mm -hmm. that it gets easier. I mean, you, you you build students up, you know, and it just keeps getting easier. And, and right. Well, fine that you can like, do it. Right, and like YouTube and, you know, and especially Skype. Yeah. That's really – it's such a cool thing. So many – um. Like most of my Skype students are from other countries and stuff mm -hmm. that would obviously they're not gonna fly to yeah. Ohio to take a guitar <laughs> lesson from me. So you know it's just cool because I finally get to like all these people have been asking me for years like for lessons. It's like well, all right, well I need to do Skype lessons. Now. I need mm -hmm. to sit down and, and do them, and and it's really cool. You know it's just it's really fun. All these yeah. different people from different cultures and that's another thing with me when I realized I had to branch out. You know, and I did that in my first Skype lessons and all that. And you wonder how, how they're going to pay for the lessons. How am I going to deliver this? And right now I've actually started doing private video lessons through YouTube. Instead of being one-on-one, -on -one, I can sit down at my own time, record a video, upload it, give them the link, and I don't have to be at a certain time at a certain appointment to meet with somebody. Right. I, I did those for a while, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I think I remember you doing those. You did some of those on Facebook as well. Facebook only, you know, lessons and things. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So the next thing was, what are the most effective ways, or no, excuse me, what were the most effective ways, and still are today, that you use to build up your clientele? I mean, to build up students, like advertising, or, you know, what, what do you find the most effective method of getting more students in? Not only that, student retention, keeping them. Um, as, well, as far as getting students, it probably sounds horrible, but I basically have nothing to, to do with that. That's all the store. Mm -hmm. So, like, people come in or call and... Like I said, it's, it's a fairly good sized store, so there's quite a bit of traffic. And they come in and, you know, they want lessons. And, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, what kind of guitar what style do you want to play? And then, you know, I, I might get it recommended. There's like five teachers there. So okay. they kind of like, maybe I get a student and the next one, next one, next one, oh, next okay. one. So they take care of the marketing aspect of it for you, then, I guess. Right. I mean, it's still like when people talk to me and stuff, like I, I'll give them my card or something that. Like, oh, you want guitar lessons? And then yeah. that, as far as, like, retention, I just think, it's like, you just have to make the lessons fun. You know, I mean, I the same goofy way I act in my, my videos, all the, like, <laughs> and all that stuff. I mean, yeah. yeah but, that, but that's how I am in there. Like, that's I real. In that's real. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I, I walk in the metronome each day, and I'm like, what's up? Just <laughs> loud, and just, I go in my room, and then. Usually the people are laughing in the middle of the lesson and stuff like that, and it's just I don't know how to be any other way. Like I'm just I'm goofy and random, and yeah. I, I just happen to play guitar. So <laughs> yeah, well that's cool. Um, I use a program. I don't know if you've heard of this or not, but I use a program called Music Teachers Helper. Have you ever heard of that? No. I've got a, a special link. It's an affiliate link, but what it is is it, I think it gives you like twenty percent off the first month or something like that. If you're interested, oh, wow. I can give you that link. It helps me keep up with my students so much. I'll type in my lesson notes, it shoots out an email to all my students, and then oh, every wow. week I've got it set up to where it'll send me a daily reminder so that I can print it out if I don't remember what I did. I can print it out and then it'll jog my memory, keep the lesson notes with me. I can send, you know, keep up with a calendar on this thing. The first five students are free, so if you wanted to try it with like two or three students and then go yeah. from there, it's free. So it's really cool about that, but once you get past like five, it's only like $14 a month for 20 students. And I'm telling you, one student pays for that membership, and you've got like 50. So it's not like you're at a whole lot of money. And it's just so much a time saver, and, and I don't know how I would do it without music teachers' helper. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. That's really interesting. I'll have to like look in. You said there's a link to that. I've, I've, I can give you a link that's a, a affiliate link for me because I'm affiliated with them. And okay. if you do sign up through that link, then they'll give me like, I don't know, a free month or a commission or something, but you'll get like 20, I think the, the deal is 20% off your first month or something like that. Wow, but okay, it's, I'll it's, have to look into that. It's awesome, I can send you the link uh, after this maybe, and uh, I definitely recommend it. I mean, it's I've used it ever since I started, and it's it's a, it's amazing. 
And it's the cool thing is too, is your students can log in. You can create your own personal website through them and you can have a, an interface where they log in and they can calculate their practice time and it has like a little bar graph, you know, oh, of, of their cool. progress and all this stuff. It's just, it's amazing. It's definitely something worth checking out. It's called Music Teacher's Helper and I'll shoot you yeah. a link of that later. Uh, yeah, I'll have to check that out. Okay, so we've talked about the student retention rate. Uh, the last question on the entrepreneur side and then we got maybe, I don't know, five or six questions after that just on miscellaneous stuff. Uh, do you have, and this is the business part of it, do you have any or have you ever thought of having any virtual assistants? I don't have any and um, I've never really thought about it. I mean, that would definitely be have to be um, a part of just like growing yeah. on like, virtual media and stuff like that. We always joke around and say that um, my wife works for Our Guitar Incorporated, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> that was my original YouTube name, but... Um, but no, actually, I mean, I, it would be cool to have. I mean, it would be nice to to have someone who would, I don't know, worry about uploading the videos and yes. and, and all that kind of stuff. But I, I kind of do what, like what you said you do. I mean, I, I upload, I might have like 10 videos already on YouTube. Yeah. And it's like, I try not to ever do like back-to-back -back videos mm -hmm. sometimes, I do, but it's usually like every like three or four days, I'll just like click on one and it's like, oh, there's a new video. Yeah. So, do you schedule them ahead of time? I, I find I schedule a lot of them. I, I've never used the scheduling part of it. I just kind of like have them all there. And like yeah. I said, whenever I, I want, because it's kind of like, I, I don't want to drown out my other video. Yeah. You post too many and then people are like, oh, I don't want to watch that one. I want to watch this one. Yeah. So I like you kind of got to kind of got to drip feed it a little bit. Right. I mean, but in some people it works. Like the one guy that I am subscribed to, he uploads like six videos at a time. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. well, you know, if that works for you, <laughs> yeah. I people would probably unsubscribe if I did that. Yeah, that's, so. that's, I don't do that either. I actually use the schedule quite frequently, actually. It saves me a lot of time. And when you, when you schedule it, it'll allow you to put in a little message to your subscribers so that when it releases, it posts that to Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus immediately. Oh, cool. I haven't got it to work with Facebook for me for some reason, but it works fine with Twitter and, and Google Plus. That way, it tells them and announces to them when the video is ready and I don't have to keep up with it, you know. Nice. Well, that's a, I've never used them, but I've always seen that option on there. Yes, it's it's a really good really good thing. It's 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 pretty cool. You can do it once to see how it works, you know. But uh, but yeah, with me, virtual assistants, I've got three right now. I use and I'm trying to create, you know, the Bluegrass Guitar Essentials, trying to get that done. This is my first product of mine that I can say is truly everything is done by me because. The last one, The Secrets of Texas Blues Guitar, I actually went to Memphis and recorded it for a guy who saw me on YouTube, wanted me to do an instructional video for him. And so I sat down and did that, and he took care, I had to come up with all the course material and had to write the tabs out by hand on this, you know, this drawing program. I didn't have a tab program, I had a drawing program. And I had to sit there, meticulously put in the numbers for everything. And he did, he took care of all the, all the production stuff. He had virtual assistants and all this. And I learned about it through, you know, Smart Passive Income blog, uh, Pat Flynn and all these other people. And uh, Tim Ferriss, The 4-Hour Workweek, blew my mind. I don't know if you've read that or not. It's an awesome read. Um, but he it talks about virtual assistants. And so now I've got, I finally was able to go through Odesk and I hired a graphic designer. I hired a... Um, uh, video editor, he's doing all the video editing for my current course, and I hired a tablature person, so I don't have to fool with it. He watches the video, he tabs it out, I pay him like five dollars an hour or whatever, and once you start doing this, you wonder, where's the money going to come from? Because you've got bills to pay, you've got this other stuff to buy, you've got business expenses. Right. But you find that once you start, it, it the money kind of comes. I mean, it's just like, you know, you get enough students or a student will magically appear that you didn't have before. So there's an extra 60 bucks a month you've got to work with. And you can right. also you can also limit their hours so you don't have to worry about they're going to go off the clock and run up this humongous charge. You can limit their hours. So, you know, I want you to work five hours a week, you know, on this project. Or you can edit my videos or you can... I'm, I'm about to get ready to have somebody else create my thumbnails because it just takes me 30 minutes or more to do one thumbnail for my channel. I got and you. I want that to pop out. You know, you want that people to get their attention whenever they see this thumbnail. 
Right. And so I've got my graphic designer. I'm going to probably soon have him start doing that because once I've kind of managed them so that once the video editing is done, I can use his hours to kind of come over here to the tablature and the graphic design. And once they're done, I can kind of come back to the video editor and I can kind of switch it back and forth as I need to. But it's something definitely I recommend is, is if you get to where you're overwhelmed and overloaded with this stuff, you could have them write your um, lesson notes or whatever for Music Teachers Helper. You could have them do your video stuff, your scheduling, yeah. your uploading, your video editing, whatever, you know. So, but that's, that's just something to think about. And I, The 4-Hour Workweek by Timothy Ferris is, is an awesome read for learning about that stuff. Uh, Chris Ducker actually came out with a brand new book of his. I don't know if you've heard of, or ever, ever heard of Chris Ducker or not, but he is like a virtual assistant pro. He is in the Philippines. He's a British guy, but he's in the Philippines, and he's been working with virtual assistants as an actual firm he's got for years. Oh, wow. So Chris Ducker's another good name I'll drop when it comes to that. It's really cool. Okay, so the, the very last few questions I've got is a miscellaneous and then a closing section, and then we'll be done, okay? Okay. All right. Miscellaneous, uh, you've been working on a shirt you mentioned in the last video. Yeah. Um, now, you, uh, this is where this shirt came from, was Custom Ink. That's where you're going through, right? Yeah. Customink.com. Yep. Love this shirt, and I, I know you're going to love yours. Have you thought about doing a hat? You're always wearing hats, and I'm sitting here I going, know. you need a hat, Robert. You need a hat. <laughs> I know. What, the only issue is, like, when I can see my hat here, is, like, I only wear, like, the trucker hats. So, yeah. Like, I don't know. Do they make those kinds of hats? Like, I know with, they with do. The I think they do visors. I think Custom Ink actually maybe do the trucker kind of hats. I'm not sure. That would, that would be cool. I, I know you're always them. wearing a hat, man, and I was like, you need to make a hat now. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Like, I, I hadn't thought about that, but that, that probably needs to happen. Yeah, so that'd be cool. I mean, the people would buy your hat, I would I would, I would, would probably assume. And that's <laughs> where, hey, that's where a virtual assistant can come in handy, have somebody design your logo. Did you design yeah. your logo for your shirt, by the way? Um, well, it was just one that was actually on the custom ink thing. Okay, so, you, yeah, but you, I, see, I think I mean, heard you mention something about you're going to change the... To, to add like the the hat and the hair and all this, you're gonna change okay, that. Yeah. Are you gonna be doing that yourself or? Well, I I'm gonna see. I I'm not sure how to do. I haven't had a chance to mess around with it anymore. Okay. But um, yeah, them or I'm gonna have someone else actually do that yeah. for me. Probably well, exactly. Because... There's if you think about it, virtual assistants are everywhere. Do you have a CPA? Do you have a tax account person? Uh yeah. There's I mean... there's a virtual assistant right there. Oh, that's true. Do you have so. somebody to mow your lawn? Well, you probably don't, but if you did, that's an assistant to help you do, accomplish things that, I mean, you don't have time for. Your time is worth more than if you was to take an hour to go out there. You, what I mean, if you got paid 30, 40 bucks an hour and you're spending two hours outside mowing the lawn when you could be inside making $200, <laughs> it just makes I, sense to hire somebody else to do it. You know what I'm saying? I, I wish that I had some more yard. I'm telling you, yard, so. I'm to that point. I'm like, man, I just I did not want to do this. I want to be in here making products or videos or something. I'm like, just get to that point. I'll know I'm financially okay when I can hire somebody to mow my lawn. I know, and, and that's a good. That, that's like that was my new goal. Like, when can I have, hire someone to mow our yard yeah. for us? <laughs> so, but yeah, for a hat, it's definitely a good idea. I think. So, are there any upcoming announcements that you would like to share? I mean, we did this on the last video part, but uh, are there any upcoming announcements for your channel? Any pedals that you want to want to demo? Anything that is in the news that you're coming up with to be watching for on your channel? Yeah, um, well, there was one announcement that's gone now, unfortunately. The Metronome got in a 1973 Fender Super Lead that I was going to demo. But it sold as fast as it came in, so. Is that a uh, uh, an amp? Yeah, so it's like um, it's a 100 watt two pad. Okay. I mean, it, it was a, a modified one, but I mean, it was a it was an original 1973. Okay. So I didn't even get to play it. I just got to take a picture of it. So. Okay. But but that one, there's some more pedals. Um, there's a couple other companies that are that I'm gonna be sending me some stuff to to demo, and um, you know, just this year, hopefully. My my EP will be out and Ooh, awesome. yeah, so it's gonna be like a four or five song EP, which I, I I try to keep working on it every chance I get. Yeah. But and then um just like the lesson package and shirts and stuff, you know. So so now I think I think uh on the video I watched just last night it was about the how to create how to write riffs that rock. 
you aren't you coming up with a, a rhythm series or something like that on your channel? Yeah, there, yeah. There's actually two new like video series. It's going to be um, rhythm. I have I don't have a name for the rhythm one yet, okay. but it's just going to be about riffs because people are usually asking me about my riffs behind the solos. Yeah. So um, that's going to be on there, and then um, I'm doing what's called video tech talk. So people are always asking me about editing videos oh, and cool and stuff like that. And that's actually I went to school for that. So oh, dude, gonna... I can't wait to see that. Then I'm always wanting to find ways to you know be creative, especially with iMovie. I know you were uh, talking about trying to learn Final Cut Pro, but iMovie is yeah. all I have, and I don't really want to put in the time to learn anything else. That's my issue with so, Final Cut Pro. Yeah. It's like. I don't have time, like I have deadlines for pedals and stuff, and yeah. so I don't have time to like be trying this stuff out. Uh -huh. So virtual assistants, <laughs> get you a video editor. I'm telling you, um, but yeah, I can't wait to see that. That'll be cool. Yeah, um, thanks. Let's see. Now you just mentioned something that sparked another question in my mind, or something. I was talking about uh, um, announcements. Um, what was that? I cannot think of that, Robert. What was it you just mentioned about announcements? And it probably sparked my memory again. Uh, the, the EP or EP, yes, that's one of the things. Is yeah. do you use? Are you using GarageBand or do you have a live band for that? Or because I thought about doing it myself, like creating my own album, maybe later on down the road after I get all these products and everything out of the way, trying to do something for myself. I don't have a band or anything like that, and I don't want to go out and find people and all this. I mean, how are you getting that accomplished? Right, that one's going to be um, all they all basically done on the the MacBook with Logic and um, the like. Superior, have you heard of the Superior Drummer program? Mm -mm. Oh, it's like a, it's a really really nice um, drumming program that this they sound super real. So it's going to be all with that, and then just me attempting to play guitar, and then um, me playing some pretty bad bass lines. Okay, so. <laughs> okay. So you're not using the garage band drum lines, you've actually got a program called Superior Drum Machine? Right, yeah, like a lot of stuff you hear is um, the garage band stuff that's just, For the you demos. know, using whatever's in there. Okay. But um, I'm actually gonna really take the time to, to write out my, my drums that I wanna use in the EP. Okay, well that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see that when that comes out. I'll definitely take a look at that. That'll be awesome. So those are some cool announcements coming up for all those that are watching that uh, you need to check out Robert's channel. I don't even know. Do you have the URL? Do you know what the username is? I mean, I don't even know yeah. what the... It's just um, shameless plug. It's www.youtube.com slash R guitar. And that, that's it. It's R pretty guitar. simple. That's awesome. Um, so the last few questions I've got is what direction is the vlog headed? Daily, weekly, monthly? I know it's kind of sporadic because of yeah, where life is right what do you what's your um, goal for the vlog and what direction is it headed it, it's gonna start being definitely weekly but um it's gonna be multiple times a week okay. so i'm actually like setting aside a spot on each day during uh, like a couple times a week like during like where i would be teaching just keeping a spot open yeah to where i can just edit a video and and i'm gonna really start posting more on the vlogs because a lot of people have said they like them and you know I like I like recording them it's just time is always an issue yeah so. yeah yeah I, it is by the way life of a guitar player now is what's the URL for that one what's the slash youtube.com slash what yeah it's just um, all the W's and YouTube slash and then it's life of and GTR um, player Life of, oh wait, <laughs> I, maybe I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to YouTube and search "Life of a Guitar Player." Yeah, that, that, that's probably better than. Or you can go to Robert's channel and he will have that on there as well. Do subscribe to that. That's a funny, funny vlog. The the last one I've, I've watched, man, it cracked me up. There was I know what it was. Well, I think the remember I remember it was when you was driving down the road and it was snowing. And you said, well, I don't have my music with me, so I'm just going to do my own. And you, like, chipmunked it, and it was super fast. And I sat there and rewound that for, like, ten times and just kept watching that, man. That cracked my me up wife, so much. My wife even laughed at that I one. I love she, that. That was hilarious. <laughs> so what do you think of uh, appear.in, this interface? I mean, isn't that awesome? Uh, really cool. You know, I was, I was impressed. I, I had never done this program before, mm -hmm. so... I was interested when I saw both the, the screens because on Skype it's kind of like the tiny little yeah, picture. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's why I wanted to do this. That way we're both the same size and it's not like me down here and you way up here, you know. 
Right. Yeah, and you could definitely, you just go there and, and you type in whatever hashtag you want. I mean, not hashtag, but whatever the slug is. Like for mine, I've got guitarpreneur and guitar and whatever you want. And you, all you have to do is like send, like type in your email address and it'll send you a confirmation. You click the confirmation link and the, the room is yours. So you sign yeah. in like you normally would. And you definitely want to check that out and get, claim your own rooms or whatever. This would definitely be like a cool idea um, for like doing like group Skype lessons or something. Yeah. So like, um, maybe like at a discounted rate, but do like five people or yeah. something who want to make a lesson. Can, you can have up to eight people, but I wouldn't go the max if you could help it because I think it kind of slows it down the more people you get in there. But you could test okay. it out with a, with a few people and see how that works. It's a totally yeah. free program, and nobody has to install anything. You just share the link, and you have control. Once there's the eight limits reached, you can lock the room. Or if it's like me, I can lock the room if I want to. It's, it's unlocked right now because nobody else has this URL to get me into. But right. I'm, I'm control. If I've claimed the room, I'm in control of what happens, just like on Hangouts. But there's no, there's not a lot of lag. There's been virtually no lag on this right now. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm using yeah, a screen it's recording. Been pretty, so. Yeah. Pretty yeah. So... The last thing is we're going to end on, since you haven't played hardly at all in this, this session, is do you have a lesson that you would like to share? I mean, do you have a lesson off the top of your head, that you, even if it's something you've done on your own channel? I think sure. it would be cool I'll, for my I'll, audience to see some we'll cool licks. Um, we'll do this. This is kind of a cool idea. <laughs> now my hands aren't warmed up, so it'll yeah. probably sound terrible. But um, it's just like a basic lick idea combining like picking and legato. So it'd be like a... <laughs> That would eventually kind of like transpose itself into like maybe like a, a more complicated idea of would be like Paul Gilbert -y. <laughs> That kind of a thing. And it, I mean, it's a pretty simple concept behind it. It's just on the high E string, I'm going from the 10th fret and pulling off to the 7th fret. And then I go to the B string and I'm going to pick 10, 8, 7. So. Then I'm going to hammer on 8, hammer on 10, and I go back to 7 on the height. Let me play along with you. Let me, let me just, <laughs> let's do this. Let's make it real, okay? So you're on 10th fret. Yep, so it's just a G major or E minor scale. So we're going, with your pinky on 10, you're going to pull off to the ninth or 7th fret on the high E. Okay. Let me turn my... My thing up here, it's not very loud. I gotta figure out, uh, uh, let's see, let me just turn it on the master level down here. Actually, let's just go to a different preset. I've got one that's louder. All right, so, try that again. All right, 10 yeah, fret. 10 pull off the seven. Now on the B string, you're gonna pick 10, eight, seven. Okay. Then what you do is after you play that seven, you're actually gonna hammer back on to eight and hammer on to ten on the B. Like that? Yep, and then you just go back to seven on the high E. But so this is pick. So on there this go. on this oh, east, oh, go ahead. You wanna go seven on the high E string. So Like that? Yeah, perfect. So basically, this is a scale shape, but you're you're leaving out one note. Now that's one thing that I keep forgetting is that I don't have to play all six notes of a scale. Yeah. So the actual note we're skipping here is on the uh, eighth fret of the E string. Yeah, I'm just skipping that, that C note, so. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, really, yeah, just skip that one note and it just kind of, um, it gives it a little bit more melody and I just kind of like move that concept around in the scales. So, you know, all over the place in any position, it just has a nice sound to it. <laughs> See, I've got to get used to that, but yeah, I'm getting used to the scale shapes and everything. The idea is just, you know, it, it kind of it sounds like it's all picked, like, like yeah. up to speed and stuff, but it's really not. It's just kind of like my whole thing is tricky, like trying to trick you yeah. into thinking that I'm picking you up. 
and that, I, I'm just not. I'm that saves a lot of the. That saves a lot of the pressure of having to have every note pick, especially if you're not as good at alternate picking as you are. You right, kind of well, cheat. <laughs> I'm not as good. <laughs> you can kind of cheat using things like that. Yeah. So that's very cool. One thing I had trying to get now is I'm doing the whole three notes per string, and I'm trying to get to where I can see all these patterns here. I mean, with you, it looks like it's just effortless to know when you're going from one scale shape to the next scale shape to the next scale shape. With me, I'm having, I'm trying to memorize those scale shapes. Right now, my most comfortable scale shape is the three notes per string starting on the G major. That's my most comfort, and that's the one that we were talking about the technical difficulties. That's the shape that's used. Yeah. And uh, I was actually, I've been using uh, Artist Works with Paul Gilbert. His, you know, you can sign up and get, and I had like a free pass, and it's still going on for right now. Hopefully it'll continue going on, but I don't know when it's going to expire, but he told me, and it was just like an epiphany to me. He told me, instead of worrying about memorizing every scale shape, just stick with one you're comfortable with, master that one, and then you can add one here and there. And I was like, why didn't I think of that, you know? Right, that's what I always tell people, is just, you know, learn one where you know it front to back, left, and then like think of all the different ways you can play it. Like you said, G major, so when you're playing, there's G major, but it's like, okay, we'll play it backwards. And then maybe start with this note each time, the note. And it's just, you know, really think of like, all these different ways that people tend to want to move on too fast yeah. before they've really learned you so know, I'm one going, shape of it. I'm sitting here going, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of all these different combinations? So I, I try <laughs> to think of that. I try to come up with different things. And I'll do the whole you know, technical difficulties things where you'll like run it up and then repeat it. And then the backwards and then try to thinking of, you know, And, but that, I guess it's the same thing. You've got to get used to that. You've got to get your fingers used to that, you know. Right. And I mean, and then even just thinking like, like skip a string, you know, play the. <laughs> and that's just like skipping a string each time instead of playing the straight scale. Yeah. You're just jumping around, you know, and there's just all kinds of little things you can do to the, to the scale. And that is just, that's total freedom when you realize that you don't have to play the scale one way we are all when we learn something new we tend to do that we tend to go okay up and down and up and down but that's not very right. musical and it's not going to train you to get out of that comfort zone you know mm -hmm. yeah and if you ever want a real challenge learn a scale we always play diagonally like this play a scale like this oh I see yeah. <laughs> like that that is that's tough I, can I, don't never, even know where, I don't even know where I want to begin with that but that's an awesome challenge <laughs> it's, it's a nice little like brain brain teaser for you <laughs> dude I'm telling you that kind of reminds me of the Paul Gilbert uh, on his intense rock where he did uh, the chromatic thing but he did it that way he was going up he was ascending but he was descending like <laughs> Something like that. It's weird, you know, why he did that. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's some that's some awesome tips from Robert Baker. And we're gonna go ahead and end this lesson. Basically, the last thing was the YouTube channel links, which we've already shared. What is the best way? The last question, Robert, is what is the best way for people to get a hold of you and for them to reach you? The, the probably the absolute best way, other than you know, email and YouTube. The one where I respond more frequently is, is Facebook. That's that seems to be the best way to to get a hold of me, just because YouTube it's kind of iffy, just because there's so many comments and messages and stuff getting like popped around. It's hard for me to keep up with that. But Facebook seems pretty pretty well reliable. Okay, all right, guys, that's been two hours total of an interview, and I thank so much, Robert. We 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 did it, man. We conquered it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a milestone for me because this is like my first actual interview with somebody, you know, on the guitar side and business side of things and everybody I listen to do interviews all the time and I'm going to try to you know set some more of these up maybe with some people on YouTube and hopefully but, they're cooler than me next time oh so. no man you're awesome I'm, I'm honored to have you as a first guest I've got uh, another guy lined up that's actually my mentor in teaching guitar I'm hoping to get him on here soon oh, but I wow. uh, don't know how frequent these will be but it's been awesome and I'm going to go ahead and shut this one down and me and you can hang out here for just a little bit longer and but thanks so much for watching, everybody. Thanks so much, Robert, for taking the time, two hours, hours out of your day, 
to no, come, thank you. To come and be with us. It's it's been an honor, my friend. It's been awesome. We'll have to hang out more. We'll have to get together more. You know. Yeah, we'll have to Skype sometime or something. Yeah, for sure. It'd be awesome. All right, we're going to get out here, guys. Please check his channel out, uh, www.youtube.com slash rguitar. And when you go there to YouTube, type in Life of a Guitar Player. He also has a blog on that, a, a video blog, a, a vlog. You need to check it out. It's hilarious. Some of this stuff is totally random, especially the one we talked about it earlier off camera, the one about where he's going to a um, uh, guitar center to actually purchase and oh, try yeah. out his SoCal. He does an awesome impersonation of, of Steve Perry in a Journey song <laughs> that will have you rolling. I'm serious. you get, you got to check that one out. It's awesome. But uh, thanks so much, Robert, and we'll get off here, and we'll see you guys, whatever the video is. Please subscribe. Please like both mine and Robert's channel if you like our stuff. He is available for Skype lessons. You can, inf uh, and for more information, shoot him a shout-out on Facebook. What's your Facebook uh, uh, URL? Uh, you know? the, the Facebook is just, you know, the whole www.facebook slash, and it's, it's Robert Baker Guitar, but it's Robert, capital R, Baker, capital B, guitar, capital G. Okay, and the guitar is the whole word, not just an abbreviation. Yeah, yeah it's the whole, it's G-U. Well, right. I'm going to spell it wrong if I try to spell yeah. it. So. <laughs> Check out Robert on Facebook if you're interested in Skype lessons. He also has, you know, some links on his YouTube uh, videos about that. He's awesome. Thanks so much, Robert, and we'll see everybody later. Please go check out bluegrassguitarcentrals.com, secretsoftexasbluesguitar.com, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and God bless. Peace out.